In this preview, I will discuss some of the major concepts of the Access Controls domain of the CBK so that prospective seminar students and exam candidates can gain a better understanding of what knowledge is required. Access controls are the collection of mechanisms and procedures that permit managers of a system to exercise a directing and restraining influence over the behavior, use, and content of a system. Access controls permit management to specify what users or processes can do, which resources they can access, and what operations they can perform on a system. Access controls form the first line of defense for both physical and cyber access. As with all other domains, my preview of access controls will be in the context of the three security principles of the CBK. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability, more commonly referred to as CIA. This domain places an emphasis on confidentiality, as sensitive and critical information must be protected from unauthorized and improper disclosure. Access control measures focus primarily on preventing unauthorized access to data and systems in order to prevent improper disclosure. There are two parts to integrity in computer systems, data integrity and system integrity. Data integrity means that data in the system accurately represents the information intended, that it is complete, and that it accurately reflects similar data in external systems. System integrity means that the system performs as intended without exception. Both are achieved, in part, by ensuring that unauthorized changes are prevented. Access control also serves to prevent intruders from obtaining unauthorized access, which would enable them to change data or systems. From the availability perspective, system resources must remain ready for use by those who are authorized. The role access control plays in availability is to limit access to those who have a verified need, to minimize the potential for accidental damage, and to minimize opportunity for denial of service. Access controls can be summarized by the acronym AAA or AAA, which stands for Authentication, Authorization, and Accounting. AAA will be the outline for how I will preview this domain. First, I will discuss techniques for authentication, Second, I will discuss means of authorization, and lastly, I will discuss approaches to accountability. In general, AAA means that users must be authenticated before being granted access to a system, they must be authorized for the level of access requested, and they must be held accountable for their actions within the system. Section 1. Authentication Authentication is a two-step process that includes a user claiming an identity and then providing proof. Identification can be provided in many forms, like a username, user ID, or a personal identification number, also known as a PIN. The problem is that identities can be spoofed, so proof is required. That's where authentication comes in. Authentication is the proof provided by the claimant. Authentication can be provided in three forms or factors. Type 1, something the user knows. Type 2, something the user has. And Type 3, something the user is. Type 1 authentication is based on something that only the authentic entity would know. For example, a password or a passphrase. Type 2 authentication is based on something that only the authentic entity would have in his or her possession. For example, a token device, a memory card, or a smart card. And Type 3 authentication uses biometrics for proof of identity. This is based on the unique personal traits we all possess, like fingerprints, retina blood vessel patterns, and voice patterns. Strong system authentication uses two or more of the three factors. The CBK also requires that candidates be familiar with single sign-on technologies used for authentication. Two SSO technologies are Kerberos and Sesame. Kerberos is a ticket-based authentication protocol created in the mid-1980s at MIT. 
It was not created by Microsoft, contrary to popular belief, but it is used for authentication on Microsoft-based networks running Active Directory directory services. The Kerberos architecture requires a central repository of user accounts and provides single sign-on functionality through a server known as the Key Distribution Center, or KDC. The KDC provides authentication traffic protection through the use of symmetric cryptography. Just as with all SSO implementations, Keveros allows the user to authenticate once to gain access to various network resources. Sesame is an authentication protocol similar to Keveros, but was developed in Europe. Sesame does not use a KDC, but separates that functionality into two distinct services, the Authentication Server, or AS, and the Privileged Attribute Server, or PAS. In contrast to Keberos, Sesame provides authentication traffic protection through asymmetric cryptography. Asymmetric cryptography uses public and private key pairs and is more commonly referred to as public key cryptography. The asymmetric cryptographic approach provides greater scalability and manageability when compared with Keberos. Section 2. Authorization. Once a user has been authenticated by the system, each access attempt within that system must be authorized. There are numerous authorization methods. The CBK requires that a candidate have in-depth knowledge of the following three. One, discretionary access control, DAC. Two, mandatory access control, MAC. And three, role-based access control, RBAC. DAC is a user-directed access control where the owner of the resource controls which other users are allowed access and what types of access. DAC stores access permissions and access control lists, more commonly known as ACLs. ACLs are attached to the resources. DAC is a decentralized approach to authorization. MAC provides a more centralized approach to authorization. In MAC, a centralized administrative body makes all access decisions and the system enforces them. MAC requires that users label their resources and the administrative body label their employees. The system then matches users to objects they are authorized to access based on these labels. RBAC is somewhat of a hybrid approach. Users specify which groups can have access to their resources and a centralized administrative body determines which groups users are members of based on employee job roles. Permissions are maintained through ACLs attached to the resources. Other authorization methods covered in the CBK are 1. Rule-based used by routers and firewalls 2. Content-based used by application gateways and 3 context space used by database systems to manage transactions. Let's briefly explore these additional three access control authorization methods. Rule-based access control is sometimes confused with role-based access control, which is quite different. Implementations of rule-based access control use source and destination host, network, and application to control network access. It is generally implemented on routers and firewalls to partition an organization's network. Content-based access control requires that the object's data be read before an access decision can be made. This is because the access to be granted or denied is based on the content within the object. Content-based access control provides more granular control over access, but carries a tremendous amount of overhead when compared to other authorization methods. Content-based access control is implemented in application gateways and client web browsers. Authorization methods can be used together to provide maximizing protection. The two that are commonly implemented together are rule-based and content-based. To reinforce understanding, consider the following scenario. A parent wishes to protect her young son from the dangers of the Internet. She establishes rules on the home internet router to deny access to specific internet addresses. She then configures the family desktop computer's web browser to deny access to any internet file or web page that contains words within its content she doesn't approve of. 
Certainly, performance will suffer because of the overhead involved in using both authorization methods, but the result is greater protection. Unfortunately, security and performance are trade-offs. The last authorization method I'll discuss is context-based. Context-based access control is typically implemented in transactional applications. Authorization decisions are solely dependent upon the context of the request. An example, to perform a transfer at your bank, you must withdraw money from one account and deposit into another. If you attempted the deposit before the withdrawal, access would be denied merely because of the sequence of the transaction. This is how context-based access control works. Section 3. Accounting. Let's first address the many different terms that are used for accounting. Interestingly, accounting is a term that comes from the days when IT was called data processing. Data processing was primarily for the support of transactional operations. In the early days of information technology, organizations would internally charge departments for their use of the mainframe. This is where the term accounting as it relates to computer systems finds its origin. Accounting is sometimes referred to as auditing. Auditing is a technical control used to track users access attempts. Auditing creates logs which can be used to investigate access violations. Thus, auditing is sometimes referred to as logging. Logs should routinely be analyzed to ensure 1. Users access permissions are adequate 2. Privileged users are not abusing their authority, and three, to detect and investigate potential intrusion. The routine analysis of audit logs is sometimes called monitoring. So there you have it. Accounting, auditing, logging, and monitoring are all terms generally referring to the same access control activity. Audit logs must be preserved and protected against tampering and accidental erasure. Hackers like to cover their tracks and attempt to alter logs to do so. Therefore, to protect logs, an organization must perform any or all of the following. 1. Store logs on write once media. 2. Hash logs to create a checksum. And 3. Create multiple copies of log data for corroboration. In addition, logs may capture data that an organization considers sensitive, like IP addresses, server names, and usernames. So logs may need to be encrypted. The CBK requires that candidates be familiar with technologies that combine and facilitate the components of access control, authentication, authorization, and accounting. These technologies are known as AAA servers. The three main AAA servers referred to in the CBK are 1. Radius, 2. TACAX Plus, and three, diameter. RADIUS stands for Remote Dial-In User Service. It provides consolidated authentication, authorization, and accounting functions for dial-up and wireless connections. RADIUS is implemented based on the client-server model where the Network Access Server, NAS, operates as a RADIUS client. RADIUS network communications between the NAS and the RADIUS server are protected and are transmitted via UDP ports 1812 and 1813. Diameter is not an acronym. It is named as the next generation of RADIUS. Like RADIUS, Diameter provides centralized AAA services in a client-server model. Unlike RADIUS, Diameter uses TCP for network communication. TCP provides Diameter with reliable, connection-oriented transmission of AAA traffic to and from the NAS and the Diameter server. Diameter is considered more reliable, scalable, secure, and flexible than RADIUS. But unfortunately, Diameter is not directly backwards compatible with RADIUS. TACAX stands for Terminal Access Controller, Access Control System. TACAX was developed by Cisco Systems. It was improved upon in 1990 and renamed Extended TACAX or XTACAX. Both versions use UDP for AAA communications. More recently, 
TACX Plus was developed to provide more reliability and scalability. This is achieved in part through the use of TCP instead of UDP for client-to-server communications. TACX Plus supports AAA traffic over TCP port 49. TACX Plus is not backwards compatible with its earlier versions TACX and XTACX. We will conclude our discussion of AAA servers with a quick comparison of RADIUS and TACX Plus. First, RADIUS is standardized by RFC, where TACX Plus is Cisco proprietary. Second, RADIUS is UDP based and TACX Plus is TCP based. Third, RADIUS only protects the password data within an authentication request, where TACX Plus protects the entire request datagram. And last, RADIUS combines authentication and authorization functions, where TACX Plus provides them as separate functions, allowing greater flexibility in network access control architecture. This concludes the preview of the Access Controls domain of IEC Squared's CISSP CBK. Please consider joining us for an official CISSP CBK review seminar where you will receive an in-depth understanding of the concepts I mentioned herein and other concepts not mentioned but important to this domain. Thank you, and ISC Square looks forward to you becoming a member.